So this is a, a different show. Um, oh, it's very different. Only, only two of us, and it's late. <laughs> uh, not not only late in the week, but also late during the day. Um, yeah, like we're late. I'm late personally right now, but we as a whole collective are also late. <laughs> yeah, it's really good stuff. It's Probably almost couldn't... kind of a blessing in disguise because like all the big news drops on like Tuesday. So yeah. the number of times we've recorded a show and then like something big drops like six hours after we record. <laughs> yeah, the price we pay for being diligent and releasing on a schedule and early after the races, like you know, we're doing the good yeah. thing and then we get punished for it every week. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily my Tuesdays are open again, so we might be able to just stick Switch with that recording schedule if that works. So if that, well, Joe's gonna have Maverick, but if we oh, can, that's we, right. If we can get around that. We can get around that. Yeah. We'll like we hope out. we can. Yeah. <laughs> we being the French we. No, not the French we. The other one. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, speaking of late, we are recording this later because uh, you said you were out at the track with the cart for the first time? Yep. I uh, I texted Pops last week and I was like, hey, <laughs> you want to bring the cart to the track with me? Because I don't have a way to bring it to the track just yet. Um, yeah. And he said yes. And he scoped out the days. And let me, by, before I get into the track stuff, my dad apparently is like, my dad needs to be a meteorologist because he scoped out the weather app and he was like, let's go for Wednesday. I think the weather's going to be good. And I'm like, I looked at the weather app and was like, oh, looks the same as every other goddamn day. So sure, yeah, whatever. And lo and behold, today is the best day that Florida has had probably in three months. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like actually in the 80s <laughs> like it was so nice um but we took the card out matt you ever like i don't know how to i don't know how to compare this have you like ever like like because your bike is pretty nice right like the bike that you race like it's it's a nice bike <laughs> yeah i've got a good build yeah exactly yeah, good one. like did you drive <laughs> did you drive absolute crap before it kind of it, it was always pretty good it was uh, I would say, so, like, my old bike that I had, my Redline, like, it feel. I still love the way that bike feels, mm -hmm. but, like, the, the prime example that I was using is I'd never ridden a bike with carbon fiber forks before. Right. And, and I've always struggled doing manuals, and then I got my new bike, and I was like, oh, I can just do this, and the bike <laughs> reacts to it. Right. So, yeah, it, there are those moments, like, I, I felt like I was pretty spoiled with my last bike, like, it, I just, like, gelled with it and was super comfortable on it, mm -hmm. but... There are those moments where you get on something that's actually really nice, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. this is what it's like. <laughs> like, I love my last car, and I love it because it gave me, like, so many good memories and so many race wins and so many fun times with my dad. And, like, yeah. he almost was hurt when I got off the first test, like, uh, the first little session we did. It was a short session because the thing's got too much grip for me, Matt. <laughs> I, it's too fast. I, I have not... I've never had to cope with the amount of G's that I'm pulling because of how much oh grip gosh. that, that go kart has. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna have to get. I'm like I'm like I haven't been in the cart in a while, so I'm a little out of fitness for it, right? But like you kind yeah. of like you always kind of keep like a minimal level of like conditioning to the sport that you play. You know, like there's yeah. always like your body's kind of like a little like like when I get back in like a rental cart or whatever, I'm usually pretty good. My arms are a little sore, but like. It, this thing, six laps, I like felt like I was gonna throw up. Like I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't handle it. There's so much oh, grip. I've never driven anything that challenged me the way that that did. Not in the sense that it was challenging to drive, but it's like, go ahead, drive me faster. Do it. Yeah. Do it. And I'm like, Fuck, I, I, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in a, I'm in a little bit of pain. I'm, I'll be in more pain tomorrow. But I'm oh, very yeah. excited. I cannot wait to start like proper working out to like get back in race fitness again. Cause like I can't just drive my way into race fitness. Like I did with my old car and even the cart that I drove for a buddy of mine, like yeah. those carts were good. Right. And like, I loved that car and it was, we put a lot of time and effort and love into it, but it just doesn't hold up. And I need to yeah. get up to the level that, that go karts at. Cause it's staring me in the face every time I drive it. Like, yeah, you put <laughs> 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 you know, I know what you mean, like, when you're talking about your dad almost being upset, because it's like, this is the thing I always tell my parents, is I was like, BMX stuff now has gotten so much better that you can get such a nice bike for, as like an entry level thing. Right. And it's it's not to say that my parents, like, didn't try to get us good stuff, but exactly. like, yes. we, didn't ha we didn't have the budget to compete with like the factory kids. Yeah. And now I'm like, 
I'm like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars into this bike, and it's like, it, it's like exactly where I want it to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Luckily, I had my dad drive it. And he didn't really push it very hard, you know. He was just kind of going yeah. for a joyride, ride. But he came off. He's like, "Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> it's stuck. Like it's. It feels like it's like. It like it feels like when you're when you're cornering. It's like grunting at you. Like it's just all. The, there's just so much bite. Like it's unbelievable. It's a crazy feeling. But um, I had a good good night. I'm I'm a little wore out, but I had a good night, and I'm excited to come here and do this show. It's a shame Tommy wasn't able to make it. Blame the guy who yeah. deleted Twitter likes from everybody. And obviously, Joe. I think Joe's just got back from his trip, so I was. I, I believe so. Yeah. Not going. I was not going to rush him back to anything at all. Um, yeah. But me and Matt are here, and we have the most fun. We do. <laughs> Tommy right. has fun, but Tommy has a different kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> he's a little. He's a little kooky, but. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Um, but uh, on that note, uh, this is the Fake Wrestle Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you engage with, engage with us in some way. Consider dropping a like or a follow or a rate, no matter where you're listening. Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you listen to podcasts, just do something. I would appreciate it. Um, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm Davey. I'm joined by Matt. Hello. That's Whatever him. side of the screen I'm on now. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to get into hot laps because we had... A very interesting Sonoma race weekend. Um, <laughs> Sonoma heard everybody talking all that crud and get delivered like two absolutely <laughs> weird races in great yeah. moments. We'll start with Cup Series. Kyle Larson wins on a on like a kind of like a tire strategy call, honestly. Yeah, he took his yeah, tires sure. late, and they made a lot of ground up. It was very impressive to see, considering how everyone kind of belittles the tires of the cup series especially on road courses and the racing you see on road courses how hard it is to pass and kyle larson just makes it look easy yeah i feel like that kind of strategy you wouldn't ever pull that in like the gen 6 era just purely on like dirt gear alone right um because the way that he and mcdowell too just absolutely flew through the field trying to get back Mm -hmm. up to the front at the end like that was not something that I don't think a lot of us expected to see, and I was kind of confused on what, like, why that was the strategy they were going for. But Larson absolutely was up to the task at the end of yeah. that race. Yeah, I saw a friend of the show, uh, Freddie Kraft. <laughs> 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 he was arguing that like tires didn't matter, and I was like, that that's why Kyle Larson won the race. What are we yeah. talking about? Like, he won the race because of that call. But it, we didn't get there without <laughs> without some <laughs> silly stuff happening. First of all, Denny Hamlin blows up like lap two. Yeah, um, the, the disaster class weekend for Joe Gibbs racing. Oh, I can't wait to get to the Xfinity race. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I cannot <clears throat> wait to dunk on Ty Gibbs. He also had a wreck in the race as well, also early. Um, Just clipped the inside wall at turn 11 that they put up and broke the suspension. A couple folks um, did that kind of in succession too, right? I think Ky- they said Kyle Busch did maybe? Or who did I that? Think, I think he might have clipped it at some point, but yeah. Yeah. I can't remember. Which, by um, the way, surprise, surprise, that wasn't as big a deal as everyone made it out to be. No. <laughs> it did lead to a really funny turn 11 crash, though, which was a good time. <laughs> and it, this is going to come in handy, too, because of the way this race finished. But watching that, I was like, this is like the first race like this we've seen since, like, 2010, which I was at that race. <laughs> Where, and then, it's like yakety sacks. Like... Yeah, and the finish was very reminiscent of that, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, actually. But yeah, but yeah, the the turn 11 thing, Josh Berry tried to block... Uh, uh i think it was eric jones and yeah. jones was just like yeah no and just kind of punted him into the field and uh <laughs> josh berry was locked up like 800 feet back like skidding into the field <laughs> caused like just bowling for nerds down in yeah, the pretty much. and then you had another incident like that when somebody dumped gregson and yep. stuffed him and mcdowell and somebody else into the tires and then mcdowell still came back and finished second which was crazy yeah that was yeah. um but yeah, well, I want to go back to the the finish of this race, specifically <laughs> that final run. And I'm I'm just going to once again <clears throat> bring up that like ever since you pointed out the fact that Martin Truex doesn't know how to race people, it is so obvious and it's every single time I see him in a position where he's running down the leader, I'm like he's not going to do it. Like I said it earlier this year at Bristol when he got taken to school by Denny Hamlin. Yep. And then he ran down Chris Buescher on way older tires and just like Michigan last year had just no answer for it. <laughs> and then Kyle Larson just scooted right by both of them. What are you talking about? Uh, he was breaking later and throttling up earlier the whole time. That didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And maybe if I run the same line as the guy in front of me, <laughs> maybe this time it'll work. And it got a little, I wouldn't say interesting, but <laughs> so Kyle Larson didn't pull away immediately from him. And now in retrospect, I'm like, I wonder if he was saving fuel because mm. the way this race ended, uh, <laughs> yep. Kyle Larson crosses the line. You know, they, they've cut to the five crew. Mike Joy's like, Kyle Larson wins the Sonoma. And then Clint Boyer starts losing his mind. And Martin Truex is out of gas coming off of turn 11 and just rolls to a stop about 500 feet before the start finish line. <laughs> And then proceeds to just put it in gear and just crank the starter and creep across the line to somehow finish in twenty uh, seventh place. Finish in P nowhere. What what a what a season! What a season! Oh man, yeah, that was <laughs> I could not stop laughing. It was like because we had that chaotic start right. There was like a bunch of yellows in stage one and two, and then we get to stage three, and it's a pretty normal Sonoma race, right? It's like it's not boring because there was still strategy, which I thought yeah. was enjoyable, but like it was playing out like a road course race and it's like okay well kyle larson's gonna have to run him down and then just like the cherry on top martin Truex jr is stopped in p3 <laughs> like the whole field <laughs> passing him i just could like what a great like honestly i thought it was a great race and i, I people oh, have yeah, been writing off that race because it's the next gen car because the next gen car on a road course because of the repay because the repay came up like that race was written off weeks ago and it honestly proved to be very entertaining and gave us a lot of really good memorable moments um yeah that was the best sonoma race we've had in a, a oh, for long sure. time for that sure i can remember oh god what was i gonna say um yeah no like it, there was so much pessimism le leading into this weekend and it was just kind of a reminder like this can still put on a show and yeah. so i was very surprised there's also a funny last lap deal with Ross and Kyle Busch, yeah. I thought for sure. I mean, the second week in a row, I thought for sure Kyle Busch was going to fight somebody, and then it just didn't happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But. That was funny, and we didn't really get to see a whole lot of it, unfortunately, but it was pretty funny. And then Chase Elliott <coughs> <laughs> booms Ross Chastain for the top five anyway. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's an, there's an onboard, because it was not shown on TV, and they didn't even mention it, but there's an onboard floating around on uh, on Twitter. Of, oh, of, of from chase elliott's point of view just hitting the crap out of him <laughs> but yeah apparently ross did uh apologize to kyle after the race because i saw his onboard and he 100 percent locked up oh, and yeah. just punted him missed but, the corner big time yeah i would I'd be surprised if kyle bush is very happy with him in the coming weeks <laughs> so kyle bush um, kyle bush's nightmare year is continuing yeah trying to think of what else uh strong run by aj allmendinger um <clears throat> tyler reddick dominated the early stages and then mm -hmm. i don't remember exactly what happened i think they just had a bad pit stop can't remember yeah they got um, mired back in there a little bit um at some point i i, I, could, I can't remember if they had an issue or not but i know they just you know, yeah something trapped things. them in the field yeah <laughs> uh todd gillen got a top 10 because uh, Martin Truex running out of gas, um, uh, you thought Todd Gilliland wouldn't appear in the comments. You thought wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, strong runs by all the Spire cars too. Yeah, so. Corey LaJoy had a good overall. Run. Yeah, uh, overall just a, a fun day. It was uh, a I fun. Really it was actually a fun race for neutrals. Like I don't. There wasn't like Ty Gibbs wrecked. Everyone was happy about that. You know, <laughs> I I'm indifferent. Yeah. But Denny Hamlin blew an engine early. Everyone was happy about that. Like it was a good race for like the average NASCAR fan. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I can I can say the same for Xfinity. Uh, Shane yeah. Gisbergen got it done <laughs> with a little bit of argy bargy on Austin Hill, <laughs> to which Austin Hill uh, Austin maybe. Hill was not very happy. Drove by SVG, SVG doing his his drift burnout thing that he does on on the put on the uh, the cool down lap with a finger out the door, and so SVG said, "That's funny," and then did burnouts behind him the whole time all the way back around. <laughs> Have you seen the clip from Stacking Pennies? Yes. He was talking about that? Yes. yes. That was so good. Yes. Where he, he was he, like, originally it was, it was for the fans, but now it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> just just the thumbs up out the window as he goes by Pit Road. Oh, so good. Dude, he gets it. He gets it. Oh, yeah. He's, he... The thing... Oh, good. Uh, I just... I just... He's going to be... He's got the right team for it, and... He's got the right attitude and he's got the talent and he's got the flair. Like he 
gets it. He he. We say this about a few drivers, and I, I and I wholeheartedly believe it, even though it hasn't come true about Ross Chastain too. But Shane McGisbergen could be a superstar here. Yeah. He's just got it all. The attitude, the, like I said, attitude, the flair, the talent. Like he gets it. He really got it. I love that guy. I love I love that he gets it. You know what I mean? Same. He and he's like he seems like he's just having so much fun too. Yeah. Because it's one of, like, I know I kinda, we kind of touched on it a few weeks ago, but it's crazy to think about this. And I was talking to my dad about this because I, I went and raced after, or I watched the finish of this race at the BMX track. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is a guy who is at the height of his powers in Australia and could could have very well stayed down there and become the best V8 supercar driver of all time. Like, yep. he could smash all of Jamie Wincup's records and be the guy. And he was like, I want to try this other thing. And he is having the time of his life. Yeah. And he's really goddamn good at it, too. <laughs> it's just the best part. And he's, he's like, not half bad at the ovals. Like, we, we always... No. Like, that's the one thing everyone always talks about when someone from another series comes over. It's like, oh, I want to see him on an oval. He's doing well. Like, genuinely. Yeah. It's uh, incredible. For a team that doesn't really get performances out of their equipment like they used to in Colleague in the Xfinity Series. Like, he does well. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, third at Atlanta, sixth at Phoenix, but, like, almost every other race, top 15. I've seen him on TV more times than A.J. Allmendinger this year and yeah. Josh Williams. True. Like, oh, God, yeah. he's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, that and just, like, <laughs> the way I just can't, I still can't get over the ending of this race, though. Just, like, <laughs> Austin Hill losing his mind. And I know we just talked about this, like, two weeks ago, but it was, like... <laughs> Again, just keep keep your eyes out on this one, you yeah. know? Like, I, I don't want to honk my own horn. I did call the colleague weirdness before it all kind of came apart. <laughs> but, you did. like, this is, like, the fourth incident in a row where Austin Hill's crew chief is, like, on the radio, like, dog, you need to stop freaking out. Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> you do this to people all the time. Yeah. You know? It is, it's literally reaping what you sow. Yeah. Have because. A pathetic post-race interview, too, to top off yeah. that. Maybe instead of worrying about the keyboard warriors, you should worry about your crew chief not being your biggest fan right now. Mm-hmm. That's what I think you should worry about, Austin. Oof. It's it's just like it's insane. <laughs> Speak to it's that. it's the exact same thing that he did to Van Gisbergen at Coda, yep. and and Shane took it on the chest or t- uh, took it on the chin, and Austin Hill's having a meltdown yeah. after the race. Shane also so. got like drove his ass back up there and like tried to get him back too, like yeah. He didn't get bodied by the rest of the field yeah. <laughs> getting back there. So, um, um, Speaking of getting bodied by the rest of the field, we, there was some carnage late in that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, there was. There was that big one. Oh, my God. That big one. I don't even know what t- corner number that is. One, two, three, four? Four? Five? I think it was, I think it was two, wasn't it? I could have sworn it was at the top of two. Was it? Because I thought they had come Maybe. through the S's and then they were... Go, oh, they maybe were like they up had. there at the top of the hill, like top of the hill, like top top of the hill. Oh, you know what? I think you are right. Yeah, because they're uh, coming. Either way, to, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, either way. <laughs> either way. That wreck happened. Carnage. I don't remember <laughs> what started it, but I just know that one billion people were in it, and yeah, um, I, th- I think the official count was seventeen cars, <laughs> which is an insane number at a road course. Um, <laughs> they also, wanted I'm them up at now. turn eleven in the Cup Series, and they—I don't think they got like to half of that. <laughs> No, uh, and you were correct. It was uh, turn four. So. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I like I said, I forget what exactly started that. I I know there was a there was some RG bargy, and then once RG bargy happens, everyone just piled in, including Ty <laughs> Gibbs, who, upon piling in, decided to mat the throttle to the floor and was doing burnouts in the middle of the wreck and swung around and destroyed his teammate Chandler Smith's car. For yeah, no I'm reason? watching it. I'm watching it again right now, and it's it. This is one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen. Like, so, like what? It it starts with somebody punts. Oh, it's Jeb Burton punts Chandler Smith into I'm Josh Williams there. in the horrible, no good, very bad year, <laughs> and uh, Brandon Jones just stops in the middle of the field and gets clobbered, and then yep. Ty Gibbs just pins it full throttle into. <laughs> into Jeb Burton's door yep. and then gets free from him and then spins back the other way around Brandon Jones and and runs head on into his own teammate and just absolutely j- dumpsters Chandler Smith. 
Why is Ty Gibbs allowed to drive a race car? What is he doing? Yeah. Like, we we don't have a camera on him in the Cup Series because most of the time he's not running up front. But, like, he still does – I guarantee you he still does dumb shit in the Cup Series. And now that he – like, every time he goes to the Xfinity Series, he does some new dumb thing. Ty Gibbs is objectively extremely talented. I know he's not a child – I mean, I should say legally he's not a child, but this is why you don't let children drive full-size race cars, because Ty Gibbs does not have the mental maturity to do this. No. It's just ridiculous. Like, that is the kind of shit that should get you parked for a week. I agree. That's that's the kind of stuff that people do in, like, open speedway lobbies in NR2003. Like, I mean, any <laughs> any series worth their salt across America, if they saw their driver get in a, if they saw a driver get in a wreck in, while the track is hot and they mat the throttle in the middle of the wreck and just do burn. Like you, you would get in trouble for that. Like he's literally playing bumper cars. He is. Yeah. Like you, you would get in trouble for that. Like you're, that's so firmly against so many, like just etiquette things. Like I, I just yeah. hold the brakes when you wreck. Like that's the first thing they teach you. Right. Like I don't, Yeah. I don't know. I just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe more people, I guess because it was such a big wreck, like, you kind of missed it. But, like, if you pay attention, like, if you don't, if you didn't notice this, go back and watch Ty Gibbs in that wreck. And, like, he's just got the throttle all the way to the floor the whole time. And in his interview, yeah. what a fucking moron. In his interview, he's like, yeah, everybody was just full throttle in the wreck. It's like, no, man, that's just <laughs> you. <laughs> Brandon Jones was literally stopped. That's, that's why he got in the wreck, as he parked it in the middle of the just track. you. What do you mean? <laughs> It just drives me crazy, and like I, I don't I, like I don't know how you can like him. I don't know how you can see the like what he does on track and be like, yeah, it's yeah. a guy that I want to pull for. Like he's such a, I don't know. I, Ty Ty Gibbs embodies everything I hate about the modern race car driver. Yeah, like, and I've I've gone on this rant before, but he he's the ultimate silver spoon driver. He races with literally zero respect, uh, and he's endlessly talented. So he's not going to go away. Yeah, you know. He's got a team owner who treats him like the golden child because he is, and he just can do anything with impunity, and he's never going to deal with any consequences of it. It's like it's ridiculous. He, he's like cartoonishly that stereotype. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Like to an extent to where it's almost ridiculous. Like it has to be a character. There's no way someone is like that. <laughs> it, it was when we were at Charlotte three years ago, and we had a group of like two middle-aged women who were like ty gibbs super fans and i was like how like what do you see in him (laughs) like like i was genuinely dumbfounded especially the dirty looks they gave me when i booed him when he won (laughs) like genuine like disgust they had with me i was like i you're the weird one here yeah yeah i just i cannot stand ty gibbs and every single time i think he's starting to turn a corner he does dumb shit like this and it's like with consistency when is anybody gonna do something about this he the, wow. he will he will mess with the wrong person in cup. Mark yeah. my words. Well, so okay, like prime example, somebody was reposting it after that was last year at Martinsville when Carson Hosevar just dumped the shit out of him. Yeah. And it was like Carson Hosevar did not have a great reputation at the time, and even then everybody was like, Yeah, but he probably had that coming. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was <laughs> that was like probably right around like peak Carson Carson Hosevar is a weapon time. And yeah. everyone was chill- <laughs> Excuse me. Everyone was chill with it. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Someone's got that. Someone's gonna. Honestly, like, I think a lot of it too. And this is this is getting into conspiracy territory, maybe. But I mean, it's not because this makes sense. Like, I think a lot of drivers don't want to go kick Joe Gibbs's grandson's ass. You know. Yeah, I would. I That's think probably so. part of it. Which someone's gonna not care about that one day. You know. Yeah. Someone, someone who's a little more secure is not gonna care about that, and they are gonna do it, but. Uh, it's it's unfortunate the circumstances because God I want to see that kid get just I, I just want to see someone scare him straight like he's he's an asshole yeah. he's a little ass the thing too he doesn't even have to do this Ty Gibbs has all of the talent in the world that's he's exactly it unbelievably good at driving a race car why are you throwing a tantrum in an Xfinity race exactly you're out of this series you've moved on yep. who cares yeah if anyone thinks we're blowing this because i feel like that like that's probably going to be oh you're blowing this you just you spent like all this time he's a cup driver and he's like highly regarded like talent wise and he gets promoted because he's like the young kid on the block he's got monster sponsorship like he's in the spotlight and this is what we're gonna see from him is shit like that and he is the face 
he is the face of the future of Toyota in mm-hmm. NASCAR. Absolutely. Like, you know, it, yeah. And it's just so frustrating that it yeah. keeps happening. So anyway, um, any car raced as well. Tommy's not here. So I don't really know what happened. Yeah. Uh, I rewatched the highlights of it, um, earlier before we did this. Um, big shout out to some Canassi friendly fire on the first lap. That was really funny. <laughs> Uh, Linus, Linus Lundquist qualified on pole and then immediately got dumped by his teammate in the first corner. Um, <laughs> also, Graham Rahal this. just didn't even turn in turn one on the first lap. He was just doing side quests. That was pretty funny. Graham Rahal's um, always doing side quests. <laughs> he's, it's been on like a 15 year side quest. He's going to be a great team owner soon. Big shout out. Joseph Newgarden had a terrible crash in oh my God, practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely nasty hit and then had a moment in the race where he dropped his right side tires off the the track and the, on the straightaway in the turn after that and just about shit his pants um <laughs> yeah no i don't blame him because that was a that was a that was a brutal hit yeah uh also i said <laughs> so stingray rob absolutely murked somebody um i think it was groshan he hit and it just reminded me of how not cool stingray rob is yeah um yeah but I saw a video that was baffling to me this week, which was there was a like Stingray Rob lookalike guy who was at the track, like wearing a shirt that said "Not or, I'm not Stingray" or something like that, and he like <laughs> met him. And I was like, you can't, you can't be the lookalike for the most default looking human who's ever existed. <laughs> like, also, how does Stingray Rob ha- like? Outside of his name, who likes Stingray Rob? Like, I know I was on board with him because his name was funny last year, but, like, the longer he's been in the spotlight, the more I found out how not cool he is. And, like, <laughs> it's just funny because yeah. I was like, Stingray Rob is the most generic-looking person I've ever seen. Like, of course there's going to be a lookalike of him. <laughs> that can't be you your grab, point. like, every third guy from the grandstands, you got a couple lookalikes of Stingray Rob. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I think that's all I really have. Oh, and Will Power won after a two-year drought, so that's pretty cool. Happy um, for Will Power. I like that yeah. guy. He's insane, but I like that guy. Yeah, he's, he's a little out there. He's crazy. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, I think that was about it. Yeah. IndyCar. IndyCar. It was, it was cool. Road America's cool. Now, but... Matthew, we're going to take them oh. from the shop. Oh, that was really loud. Oh, beauty. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> It was so me. loud on my end. It wasn't loud for me, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll turn it up. Okay, perfect. It'll be, it'll be great. <laughs> um, Kyle Larson got granted his playoff waiver. Cool. We don't All have right. to talk about it anymore. Yeah, I'm, I want to move just on want, from that too. I just wanted to put it front in the news because I was like, Get out of the way. sick of talking about it. It's done. We're moving on. Hey, remember how like they submitted the thing late and that everyone was like, yeah, it's probably just going to take some time to approve it. And then... Yeah. It got approved at, like, the normal time. Anyway, um, NASCAR Charter Talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, the latest uh, offer uh, that we talked about this recently that included the seven-year uh, the seven year deal with the seven-year extension also indicated a potential cost cap for the teams that would allow the France family to own a charter. Those are the most notable takeaways from that, that offer from NASCAR with the charters. Um, potential cost cap for the teams, I don't love that. Yeah, it does. It's not going to make a difference. It's probably just going to make things a little bit worse. Um, I'm trying that... to find the quote about it, but a representative of the teams described NASCAR's latest offer as I'm pretty sure it was insulting. Yeah, so that's not. It's, it's that not. It's not going great. That doesn't feel good. <laughs> um, and then would allow the France family to own a charter. I don't know how I feel about that one either. Like, yeah. In reality, I don't see them like running like running the charter as a race team, but. Having the charter, uh, is there a real problem with that? I mean, sort of, but, like, I don't know. There's... It just it seems like a weird sticking point to drag yeah. this whole thing to a, a here, stop. With. Here, here's the thing, too, is, like, I feel like we're getting, once again, it's no different than everything we've talked about on the show before, where we're getting pieces of information that people want us to get. And yeah. whoever leaked that stuff, they wanted to leak it for a reason, because it sounded good or it sounded bad. Um what however you feel about those things and there's a full story there that we just will never hear until the deal's finalized and we get some concrete information and numbers um yep there's also talk of like they don't want to make the charters absolutely permanent because they don't know how long they'll support be supported by a media rights deal 
Yeah. I mean, at its core, that makes sense, right? You know, you, you got you to make sure you have the money to see you can give the money. But, you know, have a clause for a media rights deal. Like, I feel like that's not the worst thing in the world to just have, like, a clause in the contract. Like, hey, if we don't have a media rights deal, we can't pay you this much. I don't, you know, I'm not a, I've yeah. never written a contract, but, like, seems like it's easy. I don't know. <laughs> just get some lawyers in there they'll figure it out lawyers yeah um, get the lawyers lawyers will lawyer it out so i think it'll get done um the oh, france yeah. family thing is still weird to me seems like a conflict of interest yeah same. um Agreed. we're all seeing how that's going for roger penske right now in any car yep um so maybe don't do that <laughs> um but speaking of charters frm we kind of reported this but confirmed that they got their third charter from shr uh, the agreed payment is between twenty to twenty-five million. That's kind of on par with the charter prices we've heard, which is interesting yeah. given how many are on the market. Um, and then on to that, Todd Gilliland signed a multi-year extension with uh, Front Row Motorsports, making him probably the face of that team, which he deserves. Yeah, um, they haven't announced obviously which charter they're. I mean, they haven't formally announced this yet. This mm-hmm. is insiders, um, but I imagine. Like the one that jumps out to me would be Josh Berry and the four charter. Mm-hmm. And cause there's rumors that they want to keep that whole operation together. And you know, if you're FRM, you absolutely want Rodney Childers in your building. So oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, um, yeah, that'd make the most sense. Yeah. So the other two, uh, still have no idea. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll run or down other three. Whoops. We'll, we'll run down. Sorry. We'll run down like the little laundry list of people in and out of cars. Uh, Brett Moffitt running for JGR. I missed that too. Um, yeah, he's running the 19 in Xfinity this week. Oh. Um, apparently, that was announced like a month ago, and I just forgot. Ew. So. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Joey Hand. <laughs> I, I love this news, by the way. Joey Hand driving the RFK yeah. number 60 car at Chicago. Thank goodness. I love that guy. That guy is a he's a wheel man. One of the best sports car oh, racers yeah. in America. Um, happy to see him taking the wheel at Chicago. Excited for that race as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Pumped. MBM Motorsports withdraws the number 66 car. Uh, from Iowa for the Cup Series. Uh, that's a bummer, but... Yeah. You know, I'm still excited for Iowa. Oh, yeah. And um, rest in peace, Parnelli Jones. Passed away at age 90. Yeah. Legend. Um, PJ, uh, who I just now realized was his son. Because uh, <laughs> I <laughs> don't know that uh, circle very much. Um, mm-hmm. Announced he's been dealing with, I think it was dementia for the last few years. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. But uh, may he rest in peace, a legend. So, Absolutely. Um, we'll kind of, we'll kind of jump back to IndyCar. I want to talk a little bit about McLaren and Yunkos. Um, they terminated their alliance. McLaren specifically did it with (laughs) Yunkos. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why. Yeah. (laughs) For those, because we haven't talked about this yet. Um, I don't know exactly what happened on track, but, uh, is it Teo Porcher is how his name's pronounced, I I believe. I think that's correct. Teddy, Teddy Pork Chops, as they call him. Yep. Um, he and uh, is it Augustine or Augustine? Oh, Augustine, that's right. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names today. Uh, Augustine name Canapino. Uh, they made contact, and uh, the Venezuelan fan or not Venezuelan? Sorry, Argentinian fans are uh, very passionate. We'll use that word to describe them. Uh, began flaming. Uh, t- old teddy pork chops in mass and uh <laughs> augustine canapino was not doing a great job of t- you know kind of t- stamping that out instead he was kind of liking and retweeting a bunch of it mm-hmm. um which Probably got him do. put on uh or got him i think he's put on leave he's been fired Essentially. that's that's the easiest way to describe it uh and like both teams and like IndyCar and NBC Sports all had to like come out and make statements and social media posts about it and in support of of Te- uh, Theo. And uh, then McLaren was like, you know what? We don't really want to work with you guys anymore. You know what? <laughs> you guys kind of suck. <laughs> so, kind of a mess. Um, yeah. If if there's any Argentinians watching this, please don't come after us. Um, We're nice. I have no problem with you guys. Lionel so. Messi's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that guy. Juan Manuel Fangio was really good, too. Back he was. In the day, Legend. So. Best of all time, yeah. in my opinion. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, speaking of IndyCar, um, Fox and IndyCar um, 
still look like a likely pairing. I wrote that a couple days ago, and it's only gotten stronger. Um, they, they expect a deal to be announced within the next couple days that Fox will be broadcasting the IndyCar races next season. Which, uh, um, hang on, I have a sound effect for this. Oh, anyway. boy. Wag. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. That's about it. Um, not Not pumped about that. <laughs> so... IndyCar's already got the, like, younger sibling symptom, and then Fox is barely even trying with, like, their NASCAR coverage, so... Yeah, as it doesn't look very good. I mean, I'm sure... <sighs> I don't even want to say that they'll surprise us, because they won't. <laughs> anyway... Well, they can I'm... surprise us, just not in the way that we expect. <laughs> That's so. true. I'm not excited about it. Uh, most IndyCar fans aren't excited about it. They'll have a lot of people to try and prove wrong come next season, but not a lot of confidence in that camp um, as far as IndyCar fans go. Um, some cool news that I kind of liked. Um, Dana White in his big mouth leaked that uh, NASCAR and Nitrocross, uh, Nitrocross's Group E class, they're in talks for some form of alliance um, together, which I think is cool. Yeah, we don't uh, really know what that means or what that looks like, but we know NASCAR has been trying to kind of like poke in at the electric car scene and poke in at electric racing, and you know this seems like it's a, it's their way in. Uh, Travis Pastrana came out and he was like, "Yeah, Dana wasn't supposed to say anything," <laughs> <laughs> which surprise, surprise, right? Um, <laughs> oh, who could have seen that coming? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we haven't really heard anything about the electric car prototype ever since David Reagan wrecked it at the Coliseum, and nobody. Uh, <laughs> reported on that <laughs> um the, i want to go back to that real quick because i remember when they announced they were like david reagan's gonna test it and we we're like okay that's i mean like he's just driving an oval you know like the fine. cup guys I mean, are gonna be there right guys like yeah they're all, there's they're a like, race hey, <laughs> david you're running the daytona 500 in a couple weeks so why don't you test it out and then the whole rain delay thing happened honestly probably for a good thing because he junked it Mm -hmm. and people there's no video of it but people posted pictures of the aftermath of it from the stands so <laughs> um <laughs> so we were kind of wondering what was going on apparently this has been going on yeah um i'm excited to see i'm excited that. i think it's cool yeah, yeah. a little bit of um, rally cross type stuff going on with nascar hell yeah yeah i'd be down for that so um i don't really know if we have more more to say about it but no. yeah, i mean i just think it's cool news you know <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll tune in yeah, I'm down. It gets me to watch some rally cross. It's so hard to watch rally cross. It is. Like yeah. when when the when WRX was like a, a thing, isn't was that what it was? Is it not still around? I don't think it is. I think it became. I, know I think GRC isn't around anymore. That's um, probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah, because GRC was like America's rally yeah, cross. Yeah, yeah. So GRC, I think GRC is not around. Um, but Nitro yeah. Cross was uh, the answer to that. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, FIA World Rallycross is still around. Oh, well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I mean, it kind of goes to what we're talking about. Is like it's hard to follow because yeah, even when it was kind of bigger, like even when they would go to like NASCAR tracks after the, like after the after the Xfinity event, and they put the ramps up at New Hampshire. You know, like yeah. even then it was hard to watch. Like you would have to like find it and make sure you were tuned in. And I don't know, it was just it was just hard to keep track of. But it's a really cool form of racing, and I hope. I don't know. It'd be cool to open some more eyes to it, and I'm glad NASCAR yeah. is a part of it. Anyway, moving on. So. Sorry, I had to go on a tangent because rally cross racing is cool. It deserves yeah, it. I agree. Um, but we're kind of at that point of the show, Matt, where we got to talk about the worst moment of the week, and that would be our bottom split moment of the week. Oh boy. Um. God, I don't even know if I have one. <laughs> I was, I was struggling to find one, and then this was originally in the news, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to make this my bottom oh, split. Oh yeah, that moment, one. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Former Cup driver Tyg Scott, uh, raced in the 60s and 70s, uh, was arrested for his involvement in the January 6th riot. Um, <laughs> I don't really have much more to say about it other than that's really funny. Pretty so. funny. Um, so, yeah. Boss <laughs> moment for me? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I've been under... Uh, I just haven't had a lot. I just haven't had time. There's just so much stuff going on. Uh, that's really my boss moment. moment. Just, just stuff. All, all stuff. Go you know, go kart stuff, which is at least fun. Podcast stuff, which is fun. It's all fun stuff. It's just there's a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Getting stuff for the the USRL truck series going and, and keeping that 
organized ish and you know just taking care of a lot of business and I, i've just been yeah. a little bit been a little bit tired but it's all fun stuff at least it's it, this is Turn probably the best the good, moment. what's up so, i said the turnout for the opener was really good though it was really good and we had a great race yeah for how yeah. many trucks we had you know yeah take that all day 36 <laughs> I was trucks say, and i think the last of like the one time we drew 30 cars in nr it was a disaster at the arca daytona race a little bit you know it was, uh, a, da- I, it was a disaster that i won so yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um road to what pro, my road to pro i'll go first i drove a go-kart that's a pretty good one. <laughs> That's pretty good. And since it's so, since it, and I only got to do it because we did the podcast so late this week. Easy yeah. road to pro moment. Now I got to come up with one. Oh, geez, I don't have, I don't have much time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine, me? I ca- I guess I'll do mine. I'm tempted to go moto related because it was another really good race. Um, mm. You had like an awesome 250 battle in the first moto. With Tom Vial and Hayden Deegan went back and forth like four times in the last two laps. Uh, Chance Hymas won his first career moto in the second 250 race. That was good. Uh, I think I'm going to go with, though, last week he was my bottom slip moment. This week it's Jet Lawrence is my road to pro moment because he's riding hurt and his starts were not good. And he was very clearly laboring and he still... and, And... Despite not getting his signature great starts outdoors, he rallied through the field to go 2-1 and win the overall. Um, And there was a really funny interview because his big brother Hunter won the first moto, and Hunter ran him down in the second race and couldn't put a move on him. And so he lost the overall win. And when they interviewed Hunter about it, his quote was, that little shit stole it from me. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) (laughs) So... That was pretty good. Um, who, yeah. Who was it when they beat Jeff Gordon in a cup race in like the nineties or something? And there's like, they came over the and like, yeah, we beat that little son of a bitch. <laughs> it, it was Mike Skinner. And I believe it was at, it was at one of the Japan races. It was either Motegi That's or Suzuka. Awesome. And they like cut to his radio and he's like, we beat that little shit. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite radio clips of all time. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I should also mention Hunter was obviously joking because it's his little brother, but still, <laughs> it was really funny. Like, immediately I was like, oh, he just said a bad word. Okay. <laughs> Moto is always such, it's, it seems like the vibes are always so good. Dude, it's, it's this, especially this outdoor season, it's been so fun this year. Like, Supercross, like, was a, I thought it was a good season. The tracks kind of stunk, um, mm. which, but, like, there was a lot of drama involved with it. But, like, it's just a fun series to watch. There's so much personality in it. So That's cool. And the thing I always talk about, too, is, like, we talk about how the era of, like, privateers and, like, f- you know, fly-by-night operations and motorsports don't really exist anymore. And, like, American motocross is really the only sport where that still happens. That's awesome. Like, you have dudes literally just, like, driving around with their vans with their motorcycles so in the sick, back. Dude. Like, there, <laughs> there was last year... I think it was Grant Harlan, um, who was riding as a privateer, you know, (laughs) taking his bikes to the track every week in his van, and he went to see a concert during the middle of the week and just drove his van with his race bike still in the back of it to the (laughs) show, and it was a good thing he did, because his garage burned down while he was gone there, while gone, and so he was like, but I didn't lose my race bike, so I could still race this week and get a paycheck. Oh my (laughs) god. It was like, yeah, if he would have just drove his normal car, he would have, his entire racing operation would have gone up in flames. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> that is, that's, that's a good story, at least. <laughs> the sport's not real. It's so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh man. Well, hey. But yeah, just all of that, just kind of a nebulous road to pro moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I say this all the time, but I really just gotta like if I ever if I ever catch it on, I gotta make sure to turn it on because it looks so much fun. It sounds like it sounds like such good vibes all the time. Yeah, but um, well, Matt, we held it down. Yeah, we did a good job. We it's don't need time. them. Joe, please come <laughs> back. Um, yeah, please. there's not gonna be a video video version again. We need you so bad. Um, well, <laughs> but uh, we did a good job. Uh, that was the Fake Racers podcast, Real Racers podcast. Again, V2. Oh, yeah. Episode 2 of the Real Races Podcast. You heard it here first. Uh, we appreciate you watching and listening this week. 
please make sure to drop a comment or a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Obviously, it's just a screenshot. Sorry about that. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast, give us a rating. Give us a follow. Download the show if you feel like it. Um, whatever you want to do. Find us on Twitter, at Fake Racers. On Twitter, just at Fake Racers. Uh, make sure to follow Track and Turf for all the other projects here on uh, on YouTube and Twitter. That's Track underscore and underscore Turf. Um, there are broadcasts this week on JTN. I know for sure there is one tomorrow night. I forget. It's probably BSR or something. Um, I will not be streaming, but tomorrow on Captain Esports Network, uh, the USRL Truck Series, Track and Surf Truck Series, mind you, uh, is live from Auto Club. We are expecting a big cool. field. I'm terrified. And it's going to be, a lot, be a, bit, a lot of fun. Matt, if you want to promote anything, you can. If you, if you don't feel like um, it, it's okay. I am going to be, I will say, I'm not going to be here next week because I am going to be in Malibu. So okay. that's going to be cool. Um, I can't wait to hear about it, though. Racing a state qualifier in Napa, and or oh, doubleheader yeah. Saturday, Sunday in oh, Napa, California. That's awesome. Which will be cool. And then we're going to Malibu for vacation. So oh, yeah. that'll also be cool. Well deserved. Um, funny, <laughs> funny thing about that. So my roommate and I have a mutual friend who's coming up to visit. Uh, and he lives in SoCal, and he's coming up basically the day before I leave. So we're basically trading. So, <laughs> um, also, you, I don't know if you ever saw, but you were mentioning like comment our videos. Uh, there was that guy last week who said, "Can we ban Tommy for that telephone company line?" And also ban Davy for no reason. Uh, and I just said, finally, it's time for the Matt Racers podcast. <laughs> I saw so. that. I saw that comment. <laughs> I, I replied to it as well, and I said, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I had to say. I didn't have to say anything else. Yep. Shout out so, to, um, to the homie. Can't think of anything else to be coming up. I'll try to post videos on my races on Twitter. So hell yeah, yeah. You can have the login to the track and turf Twitter if you need it. Oh yeah, I still have that actually. Yeah. There I'll you go. That. Even better. Um, but I think that's all, folks. Uh, once again, we really appreciate you tuning in. Keep tuning in. We 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 really 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 do appreciate. It. We put in a lot of work into the show and. Um, means a lot to the people who stick around and give us a little bit of support. But uh, oh, yeah. that's the Fake Racers Podcast. Next week, we'll, we'll know you're gone next week. No, You're gone next week? No, you're not on the show next week, right? Yeah, I'm going to be gone all next week. This so. is the longest the Fake Racers Podcast has gone without a full cast in a hot goddamn <laughs> minute. All right, I know, we'll I be... got nervous too when Joe was <laughs> announcing he was leaving for two weeks and I was like, oh god, is that when I'm also going to be gone? Dude, I would have just, have to... I would have just popped a gummy and started talking. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> with special guests, Tommy Bordeaux and Dewey Shram. <laughs> or whatever. Oh man. I'm glad yeah. that didn't have to happen because I probably wouldn't <laughs> be able to hold in Dewey's address. <laughs> 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 Thank you for listening. It's been the Baker's podcast. Oh my god. We're no better than Oofsides. Good night. No. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>